you know, when you have hundreds of people making comments about your body, about like your intimate areas, it, it does really affect you. You know, everyone had an opinion of me now. Suddenly it was all very public. Um, and I think you internalize an awful lot of that. And I thought every, what everyone said about me was true. How much did you know about revenge porn before it happened to you? Uh, I knew nothing about uh, revenge porn, revenge by sex abuse before it happened to me. Um, it was very much something that I had kind of seen talked about like in the media say I know there was like a few videos of girls that went viral and stuff and like it was honestly really common as well like I myself was in group chats where like a girl's nudes would be shared in and everyone kind of saw it was funny because no one was properly educated on it it was sent to my grandparents it was sent to my parents it was sent to my whole family um it was also every time I went on social media it was just being shared like hundreds of times I was getting hundreds of text messages off my friends off everyone it's so common and so normalized, especially in like schools and like younger circles, that I didn't really realize there was anything wrong with it. When it got shared, it blew up overnight, nearly viral. Like everyone had Facebook statuses. I had 400 plus messages on Facebook calling me every day under the sun, telling me uh, to take my own life. Um, Anything you can think of, slot, or, or anything you can think of. Um, it was really, really, really bad. It was shared like thousands of times. I had girls uploading it as their Facebook profile picture, putting up statuses about me. Uh, it was really, really bad when it did get out. And the person that shared it out, I have an idea who it was who started it, but I obviously can't prove anything, which makes it very difficult because there's nothing really I can do about it in that instance. Why do you think that men published that video? Um, so he was really not good to me. He was quite abusive, I think. I think, I can't say who did, who published it, obviously, but um, the person I suspect who did it was really bad and quite abusive and um, went on to stalk me for many years, I have a restraining order and everything. And I think it was very much a, if I can't have you, no one else is going to want you and just completely tried to destroy me. Um, there was threats, there was death threats for years. Um, so I think it was just very much a, it was just a malicious thing to do, it was just to get at me. So when the video got out, did you contact police? What did you do? Uh, when the video got out, no, I didn't contact police because I kind of looked it up and it wasn't a crime in Ireland at the time. So there was nothing that really could be done about it. Um, like there was one night he was trying to break into my house or he was outside my house and I called them and they were like, uh, oh, let us know, well, let us know if he breaks in and I was like, well, that's great, <laughs> you know? So there was no help, there was, there was nothing I could do. Um, I was off social media completely, kind of went underground, didn't speak to anybody um, for a long time. You know, I wasn't even really a member of society. I was just, it was in a very bad place for a long time because of it. Would you say it affected your mental health? Oh, very, like very much so, it completely changed my life. Um, how I viewed myself. You know, when you have hundreds of people making comments about your body, about like your intimate areas, it, it does really affect you. You know, everyone had an opinion of me now. Suddenly it was all very public. Um, and I think you internalize an awful lot of that. I do think it impacted my sex life as well because I was a lot more confident before those videos got released. But then of course I had hundreds of people commenting on my body. So all of a sudden I was insecure about things that I didn't even know I should have been insecure about or like people had perceptions of me that I didn't even have myself before that. And then of course, when you try to have sex after that, you're kind of like just hearing everything everyone said online in your head going around in a circle. I went to therapy and there was a lot of me reframing it in my own mind to say, um, this isn't something that I did. I didn't really actually do anything wrong. This is like a societal issue. Um, this is something that was done to me to harm me and then just saying like all these people that tried to tear me down I was like I can't let them win. What was the thing that helped you turn your life around and get over this? Um, I think the turning point for me was when I kind of saw so many people going through it. I realized that like people were actually starting to reach out to me about their own instances because obviously mine had been so public and I kind of spoke about it a little bit and 
there's so many people impacted by this and I was like I don't think anything any one of them did anything wrong so why am I putting that on myself and why am I saying that I completely ruined my own life um, I think that that was kind of the turning point of seeing how many victims there was and how many people I knew personally have been through it. I made a petition because I said the first thing that's really important in all this is education. Um, you know, if people don't know about it, they're not going to be able to help much. Um, and I don't think people realise like the scope of it. So by making the petition, it kind of blew up overnight. And then I was doing like radio and um, all of that. And then it brought a lot of awareness to it. So the law that was being proposed as well was failing and I knew that the one in the UK had failed because in the UK you have to prove intent to cause harm and that's on the victim. And I was like, the law that they're currently going to pass just won't be good enough and will, ca will cause it to fail. So I met up with people um, I knew and we drafted kind of like a, an idea of a law that would work and where it incl included like threatening to send images and all the other stuff. Now it didn't pass exactly how we would have wanted it to, but we knew like it was probably better to pass it now because there's so many people that go through it. When I created the petition I used the words revenge porn just because it was such a commonly known one, but I refer to it image-based sexual abuse because it's so harmful to call it revenge porn and it puts the onus on the victim of the crime. Um, that they have done something wrong to deserve this, that it's a revenge when really it's just, it is a form of sexual abuse. So when was the law passed? So Christmas 2020, I think it was, the law was passed and then it came into effect in that February, but it's only been passed for a year, I think, officially a year and like a few months. Um, I think it has been used in a few cases, but I don't think it's nearly strong enough still as a law and it's still not being taken as seriously because even the guards themselves have no education on this matter so they don't know how to handle it properly. I still have people going in being told that there is no law so there's still a lot of work to be done. To tackle it I think it really starts education, young, all throughout school but the thing is is that you need education around social media and the internet and sex because that's still not something I think that's talked about a lot and there's a lot in that you have like child sex trafficking, grooming, everything you don't realize how much of a broad issue it is and the fact that kids aren't being taught how to navigate the internet when it is can be very dangerous I think is a massive problem. What's the scale of the of this problem in the UK um, and in yeah, Ireland? Millions of websites we're each containing millions of videos we sent uh, 46 links to the guards and in just two of those there's 245,000 images and that's just from one website one small thing alone so if you look at it from a broader perspective you can probably imagine how bad of an issue it is and you have all age ranges you have kind of anyone that can be impacted you have all types of ways like you have hidden cameras you have um, people filming without consent like without consent it's just it's really 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 common do you think you can trust people now um, no, I still don't trust people and I don't think I will be able to for a long time. I think that there's a lot of sexual trauma that's happened to me throughout my whole life that um, I think can only really be solved by consent education because I didn't realise a lot of it was wrong because I wasn't educated on consent or when people breached that consent. I had no idea. I just kind of blamed myself and internalised everything. What would you say is the future like for you? What are your plans for the future? I would love to go into do psychology and maybe work around image-based sexual abuse because there's not much psychological study done around the internet in general and I'd like to, I think I'd like to go into cyber security as well and maybe work on making websites safer for people um, and work around consent and just do it from a psychological standpoint rather than, you know, the way it's kind of being done now. There's a lot of religious groups that are nearly in charge of it so I think maybe just a fresh eyes and look at it from more a scientific perspective. If there was a young girl watching this now who had image-based sexual assault happen to her, mm -hmm. what would you tell her? What advice would you give her? The one thing I always say to people is, your life's not over. You haven't done anything wrong. Uh, please don't blame yourself. This is something that was done to you. And I would say always reach out. There's multiple supports you can get. If you're watching in the UK, there's a revenge porn hotline. Um, there's multiple, look up for your area. Um, and go reach out for help if you can. What would you say are the steps to protect yourself? If you want to send nudes, 
Um, you know, there, you can say I can say only send them to somebody you trust, but you don't know who you can trust and who can't. Like I'm pretty sure nearly everyone who goes through it has sent them to somebody they trust. Um, what I would say is, if you're going to send them and you're really worried about them being shared around, don't have anything identifiable in them. So tattoos. If you're sending them in your bedroom, make sure that like there is nothing identifiable. If you're if you want to send them. I'm not going to tell you not to do it because I don't think that that's ever going to work, you know, it's um, and there's nothing wrong with sending nudes as long as you're like educated and it's something you really want to do and you're not being pressured. Um, but just I'd say take precautions that like if you don't want them getting out or being traced back to you, just make sure that they can't be if that makes sense. I'm going to be honest here, if I could go back and do something differently, I think that I wouldn't have taken the nudes at all just because of how much of an impact it had. I think I'd be a completely different person. But also, I think that I would have reported it at the time and taken it more seriously is my one thing. I maybe started pushing for change earlier. But like, I think when you go through something like that, it was so different for me because I didn't know what to do. I can't blame myself for how I handled anything at the end of the day. When did you create OnlyFans and why did you do that? So I made an OnlyFans just after I made the petition, I think. Um, and it was very much uh, two fingers up to everyone who was sending around my nudes. And I was like, you can't shame me for something if I own it myself. And obviously, I was like, this is something that's used against me. If I can profit off it, then that's amazing. Like, I've been sexualized really badly nearly my whole life. So if I, I was like, maybe this is something I can like, profit from and turn it into something good for me. And honestly, it was probably the best decision I made. I guess it made me a lot more confident because like, I was so afraid when I started it. I wouldn't post anything. And then slowly as time went on, I kind of got way more comfortable with myself. And I was like, OK, this is actually something I'm interested in doing now. Um, and it really like it did build confidence because you're getting so many compliments nearly every day now. Whereas before it was like when my news got shared, it was all nearly mean comments. But now I get like do you know, I get like the, the good comments now, so I think it, it does help your confidence. For, well, for me personally, it did anyway. I kind of took ownership in it. I was like, I haven't done anything wrong. If you're going to judge me, you're going to judge me. Um, but I'm not going to judge myself. Um, and I actually really did. It made me love myself more, I think, because I had to overcome these things and decide for myself that I was going to love myself rather than just being oblivious. What I've been interested to see in the last kind of last decade, I guess, where social media is the biggest it's ever been, the online abuse and the sexual harassment is just out of control. It's completely out of control. 